So how many of you have heard that insulin is a fat, the, the fat storage hormone? Insulin is the fat storage hormone. I've heard this so much and I want to clear this up because I hate this term. I hate this term. It is like screwed up so many people because I know you guys are not freaking biologists, ex <laughs> nutritionists, physiologists, and you're just like, okay, you're just trusting blindly like insulin is the fat storage hormone. And I hate this. I hate this term. Inter insulin is an energy storage hormone. It doesn't only like, I feel like the general consensus in the world is like, okay, so what makes insulin go up? Carbs. So if I eat carbs, my insulin goes up and I get fat. That's seriously what like so many people have been indoctrinated to believe. And this is ah, bad information. Okay. Let me fill you in on how it works. Insulin Yes, it does come in and help clear blood sugar out, which by the way, you get a blood sugar rise from eating pretty much any food. It just goes higher if you get carbs. Insulin comes in and what does it do? Does it just take, it takes every single bit of blood sugar and just puts it all to body fat? No. Like, why do you think bodybuilders who are like five or 6% body fat, what, like why would they be eating rice? Hmm? Why would they be eating rice? Why would they be shoveling rice and chicken into their mouths as they're walking out the gym? Why? When they're trying to be like 5%, 6% body fat. <laughs> you feel my frustration? Yeah. Because insulin is an energy shuttling hormone and it, body fat is not the only place that the glucose from the carbs goes. It can go in any tissue cell, including all of your muscle cells and your liver cells. And then whatever is left, whatever is extra, go, get stored as body fat so you don't go into a diabetic coma and die. So it is only when we don't have any more room for any more glucose in any of our muscle cells, our liver, that the rest goes to fat storage. But I'm sick of this because it's like literally like what people are getting indoctrinated. When we when you start hearing this from health experts, insulin is a fat storage hormone. So as soon as literally I know people who are like they think any rise in blood sugar is just directly going to body fat. That is not how the body works. Hear my words. Okay, God, it, unless you're insulin resistant. Okay, so if you're insulin resistant and you're going to know that because you're going to have high blood sugar in the morning before you do anything. So if you're over a hundred, go to freaking Target or Walgreens or wherever, get a little blood glucose meter, literally check or go do blood work through your doc or whatever. And if your fasted morning blood sugar is over a hundred before you have done anything, you haven't had any coffee, you haven't drank anything, you didn't work out, you're on your way to diabetes. I'm just going to keep it real with you. That's teetering into the pre-diabetic range. And most of your doctors will not tell you this until you hit pretty much diabetes, like 126 or 100, something like that. If you are over 100, you are insulin resistant in a short period. <laughs> You're on your way to becoming more and more insulin resistant. And that's where all the issues come. And a big, huge sign of that is if you have to, if you feel like you got to constantly be eating or you just feel like you're going to die, please go get your blood sugar tested. <laughs> okay. All right. It goes along with cardio is the best way to lose body fat. Yep. And if it doesn't work, you better start doing four hours of cardio. <laughs> the best way to have healthy body weight is to build freaking muscle, sleep like a boss, eat nutrient dense foods that fill you up, check and see if you have high blood sugar or some other massive health problem, gut issues, whatever, get that stuff corrected and the game gets easier. But the, the big point I want to drive home here is insulin is not a fat storage hormone. It's an energy shuttling hormone that sends glucose to your muscle cells, your liver cells, and what's left over goes to body fat. So we got to stop calling it this. It's confusing the hell out of people. They're terrified of eating carbohydrates when maybe they have like an 85 for their fasting glucose in the morning and they have no reason. They got good gut health. No reason to not be eating carbohydrates and getting, you know, the short chain fatty acids from the butyrate production, the fibers, all the micronutrients, phytonutrients, all that stuff. They just heard, oh, if I eat carbs, I'm going to get fat because so-and-so said on the internet and it's bullshit and I'm sick of it and it's creating all these weird behaviors with food that are totally unnecessary. 
did 6.2 hours on the bike in the mountains. Well, damn, that sounds like you went on quite the adventure. Um, good advice about getting a glucose meter and testing in the morning. Yes, it's cheap. Just go get one at where, and I, I don't want to say Walmart because I can't say Walmart. <laughs> you can go Walmart if you want to. I hate Walmart. <laughs> it makes Teva in a bad mood. But <laughs> just, you know, at the drugstore or just order one on Amazon. Just get a blood sugar meter. Prick your fingers. Good for you. It's good for you to be and get over the little mind thing. You can do it. Okay. And find out. So 85, it's considered awesome. If you're in the 90s, then yeah, you need to start making sure you're adding protein to every meal, getting a lot of fibers in, that if your gut can tolerate, sleeping more, those are the big hitters, and drive that sucker down, right? If you're in the 90s in the morning, you better be watching out. You're on your way to a place you don't want to be going. We want to see that below 90, okay? Um, interesting. I never thought it that way. I thought it was a hormone. It is a hormone. It is a hormone. It's a hormone that comes in when you get a blood sugar rise and takes all the those wonderful, I actually think glucose is good since it fuels every cell in our body and it sends it into our muscle cells, our liver cells. And th these are storage tanks. I know you guys have heard me say this, but like the bigger your storage, oh, my, my, my guns are not so big right now because <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I'm getting an x-ray right now. I'm at Dr. Bruce's office. He's going to x-ray me, but um, uh, I've got a hand. I, I think I broke my finger. That's <laughs> that's all I got. It's like shaking, trying to move it straight. Anyway, these are storage tanks. So the bigger your storage tanks for carbs, you can act. I mean, I don't think you can change the size of your liver unless I'm <laughs> misinformed. And maybe you can. Well, I guess if, never mind. I won't go there. Um, <laughs> but you can change the size of these storage tanks. And the bigger storage tanks you build in your muscles, you have more room to store more carbs as glucose to save them for later for energy. So if you've got 40% body fat and you're never exercising, no wonder you're carb intolerant. I'm just being real with you. Your storage tanks are so small and then you're never using up any of your glucose that you ate. You're not carb intolerant. You just have really small storage tanks. You're never using the carbs that you eat. And then on top of it, you might be insulin resistant or have some inflammation. So like you're not even uptaking glucose from your cells well. That's how this shit works. Thank you. <laughs> I got the coaches on here like, yes, God damn it. <laughs> I'm lean with glucose in the 90s in the morning, even on keto. A1C is 5.3. Yeah, I mean, you might want to consider trying more of the higher protein fiber approach, right? And then, um, I mean, I can't tell you much more generally off of the lie from there, but you can get that down. You can get that down. And it could be stress too or low sleep can make adrenaline go higher. There's a lot of factors. Great info. Hate to tell you, but you may need to break your finger again to set it straight. I know I was thinking that because I kind of waited a little while for the next race. So that's all right. We'll do what we got to do here. <laughs> anyway, insulin's not a fat storage hormone. Carbs are not the bad guy. It's a more complicated issue. It's kind of like victim mentality. It's like, no, it's actually you, dude. It's not carbs. <laughs> Why can some people eat carbs? and be super metabolically healthy and you can't. It's not the carbs, it's you. And I say that with all the love, but I want I want people to accept that because if you can do the metabolic work, you it can be changed. You're not carb intolerant as a human being. It's this is a, a an environment that has been created unless there's some crazy rare exception, but generally speaking, okay, it's, it's an environment that's been created in you that can be changed so that you can become carb tolerant again. You might have a dysbiotic gut, right? You might have uh, insulin resistance. You might have me just metabolic issues going on inside, but human beings, are, are all of us, except for, you know, very, you have epilepsy and you're trying to do keto okay obviously i know there's exceptions but we are designed to be able to eat carbs and not be fat and the leanest people in the world i published this in my freaking book and did a f ton of research on it so i can tell you for a fact the leanest and healthiest and longest living populations on the planet all eat carbohydrates and we can get in all this Eskimo talk, but guess what? The life expectancy of, of those people is not very long. So why are we using them as the top example of health? And I know there's other factors, lifestyle, all that, but like this shit's gotta, we gotta stop. 
Okinawa has the largest amount of centenarians in recorded human history. The traditional Okinawan diet is seven, no, 85% carbohydrates. So we got to stop with demonizing carbohydrates and take a look at our own damn selves and say, what is going on causing me to not be able to eat carbohydrates without getting fat? And for the most part, it's real simple. It's excess energy consumption. You're eating too much and moving too little. And I know that's like, Tara, you're not allowed to say that, but that's how it starts. (laughs) <laughs> that's how it starts. And so there's things that we can do to make it easier for you to get to where you want to go without having to be like, I guess I'm just going to starve myself and like move more. I, okay. There's things we can do, but essentially like we live in a day and time where food is available to us nonstop. So we've got to learn how to make lifestyle flows that get us to a place where we're not just getting obese and metabolically unhealthy and we can still eat carbs. I say sleeping like a boss, Intermittent fasting, managing your life stress, boosting protein and fiber intake, eating real unprocessed food as much as you possibly can, and you got to go freaking beast mode in the gym. People will ask me all the time how I eat. You're like, you don't track macros or any of that? I'm like, no, dude, but you don't see me in the gym every morning. I'm effing killing it in there. I would not have the physique or the leanness that I have if I didn't do that. That matters. My sleep matters. My stress management matters. Intermittent fasting matters. You know, so these things are strategies that I use to live a thriving, healthy life and a thriving, healthy body and be able to eat whatever I want in terms of macronutrients. So anyway, I just had to share that because I'm so tired of people being afraid of freaking carbohydrates because they heard insulin's a fat storage hormone. It's only a fat storage hormone after you ran out of room in your muscles and liver. So go build some goddamn muscles. Okay, (laughs) right? And get some lab testing and figure out what's going on so you can eat like a normal human again. Okay, much love. I gotta go. X-ray time. (laughs) Bye, guys.